Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is our market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for Wednesday, November 20th, 2013. Well, we're definitely looking for a, uh, a down day uh, after what we saw from the scans yesterday and also from the overall price price action in, in the market, and we uh, certainly got that. But uh, I think I think what we have to characterize today as an arrested development. Uh, we had some pretty uh, pretty dramatic moves, moves yesterday, especially on the uh, NASDAQ side. But today we uh, we saw downside action, lack of bidding. But uh, I think what really was the key development today was the uh, negative internals. So while the uh, Nasdaq was only down three on the day, the uh, Dow was down uh, just a handful. The uh, advanced declines were uh, minus about uh, 1,150 or 1,200 issues, and about and minus about 700 on Nasdaq. So we definitely did some uh, some damage internally to the market. So I think that's the real theme of the day. But uh, without further ado, let's move on to the uh, major uh, futures contracts and take a look at the levels. All right, so here's a look at the ES futures. The ES uh, kind of started to roll back down again today, definitely feeling the weight of that outside day down yesterday, but it was, it was uh, kind of a gentle move to the downside. It doesn't mean that uh, we can't get a more aggressive move to the downside. Certainly that could be in the cards. It's not really seasonally a favorable time for a, a sharp move to the downside, I would probably expect more of, uh, as we described earlier, an arrested move to the downside, an arrested development, but uh, uh, anything is always possible. That's uh, that's why we're traders. So key levels to watch. We settled, if you look at the uh, look at the chart here, we settled approximately at uh, the previous day's low. So that level was definitely in play. The uh, 5 ace level is going to be a minor level. The next level to come into play really is going to be that uh, 10 EMA to the downside, which is also roughly equivalent to this range expansion candle to the upside that was very powerful. If we do start to pivot back to the upside again tomorrow, the uh, high water mark of the move is going to be important, about 17.99 and a half, and then the 6 eighths level will come into play after that. Moving on to the NQ futures, the NQ futures uh, were a little bit weaker, um, kind of on a relative basis than the uh, than the broad market, just because we settled down below the previous day's low, we had more expansion to the downside, more range covered in that negative candle. We also settled below the 10 EMA. Levels to watch for tomorrow to the downside are going to be the 7 ace level here, and then the low of this uh, this major pivot candle to the upside, that was the breakout candle. It's going to be coming in at about uh, 33.43. To the upside, high water mark of the move is going to be important at 34.23, and then the 8 ace level, of course. Here's a look at our 10-day trend. Got very, very close to that uh, that over um, overbought threshold of 0 0.85. Didn't really penetrate it or really kind of kind of nail it in any any kind of positive way. But we did get down here and uh, start to roll back to the downside. So if we get a breach of that 0 0.85 level, that's going to be that's going to be notable. Last time we got down there was uh, was about. Uh, Mid-August, and you see the uh, reaction that the uh, that the market had in uh, mid-September. We certainly had a, uh, a a move to the downside in the market. We're close, but we're not there. So keep an eye on this one. All right, here's a look at the uh, Dow Gold ratio on the uh, on a daily basis. This is one of those little risk on risk on risk off uh, kind of measurements. You can see that we just barely scratched out a new high and haven't been able to really add on to it. So people are putting on or traders that is are putting on. Uh, risk in, in in the equities in favor of the safety of gold for now. So we definitely want to see this participate and continue to the upside and see this uh, indicate continue to indicate that riskers that uh, that traders still have a risk on appetite. Here's I'm gonna switch this up to the weekly chart now real quickly. The weekly chart shows basically the same thing. So we've had this big cupping action down here, this breakout and this pivot to the upside. And you can see that uh, if we do start to turn to the upside there's there's plenty of room to run before we get any any anywhere near as uh, overbought on this ratio. All right, next chart up is going to be the uh, oil services as OSX represented by red uh in conjunction with the uh with the oil futures which is blue. We've got really really stretched out here where we had a a real divergence between the oil futures versus the oil producing type stocks. So there's plenty of room in here for a move either way, either a roll down to the downside of the OSX or uh, move back up in the uh, in the oil futures. You know, classically, you know, as far as intermarket classic intermarket analysis goes, the uh, oil services tend to lead uh, 
the futures. So when you have a divergence in the futures to the downside, the futures tend to bounce. But uh, the oil services are pretty overbought. So we'll have to see how this one works out. But either way, when this starts to converge, there's definitely going to be uh, some playable uh, energy in the market. So don't miss this one. Here's a look at the multi-sector daily chart. We uh, kind of saw kind of no movement out of the uh, out of the XAU, which is the gold. Uh, the, uh, the semiconductors, the SOX, were uh, were actually fairly negative today. The uh, BTK was also negative, so Nasdaq really had, didn't have a very great showing. The uh, the uh, financials uh, definitely put up the best showing uh, out of this this subgrouping, so definitely want to focus on the uh, financials tomorrow. All right, so let's take a look at our sectors and rank them from best to worst. Remember, you can always uh, on the e-signal charts click on uh, whatever whatever uh, header column up here you want, and it will sort it uh, from best to worst or from worst to best, depending on on how you want to see it. Here's a look at the uh, averages. The Morgan Stanley Commodity Related Index was top gun. Broker dealers were strong. The uh, BKX was was pretty decent, all things considered. Today, at the bottom of the list today was the uh, semiconductors, and the transports were uh, were fairly weak, as well as the uh, OSX. Don't want to see the OSX and the transports kind of at the bottom of the list at this point. But let's move on and take a look at uh, a couple of the different charts. And if you want to pause the video here, you can also take a look at the uh, individual bar counts, and some of those are getting to some pretty critical areas, as you can see, especially focus on the other uh, 13s in the uh, Seeker Countdown and the Comer Countdown. All right, so let's start with the worst. Get that out of the way. <laughs> Here's a look at the Sox. The Sox was the worst performing group on the day. Dropped all the way down, followed through on this uh, negative candle yesterday. Dropped all the way down to the 50 DMA with some uh, pretty negative action. If we lose the 50 DMA, which probably will be game tomorrow, when you get to the 50s and the 200s, they tend to be gamed a little bit. The 200s definitely more so or longer in the gaming period than the uh, 50, but certainly we have to be on, on guard for that. If we do break to the downside, this previous low is going to be the next level, about 493, 494, and then the 7 8 level will come into play. Key resistance remains the high water mark here of the move, which is a double top, and then above that the risk level here at 513. Moving on to the oil services, the oil services were also fairly weak, but uh, basically still contained within this lateral range. We do have a potential double top in place. We've now settled and followed through below the 10 EMA, which puts us to short-term negative. This 4 ace level, in conjunction with the 50-period moving average, which is just below, will be uh, very important support and critical for this to hold the intermediate trend. To the upside, the high water mark of the move remains resistance at 293. BTK index, I'm sorry, the, the banking index, the BKX, really didn't do too much today, but did hold, but did hold fast. We're still in this potential double top area, so we have to be aware of that. Key, key levels to the downside are the 4 ace level and the high water mark of this move will be the resistance area. The broker index was definitely strong today, but you can see that we're getting pretty deep into the count here. 8 bars up into the secret count and uh, 12 bars up on the countdown. Probably, if we're, we're, we're probably going to wind up printing nine days up, which is going to wind up recycling this count to the upside here because we have to print the 13 before we print a new nine in a subsequent setup phase. So that's definitely on the table. So I expect that to happen, but the GAN, the, the GAN box is not going to shift. So 8 ace at 150 is going to be key resistance. And the one thing we do have is we've got some uh, some topping tails setting up here where the uh, topping tails are bigger than the uh, the rest of the candle. So we're definitely poised for some some uh, downside here keep an eye on the uh, the low water mark from yesterday from the from Tuesday if that gets taken out to the downside definitely keep an eye on Goldman Sachs and the associated stocks for some short entries let's take a look at the Dow Jones transports started to flip to the downside we've got a 13 exhaustion in place we settled down at the uh, the 10 EMA if we take out the 10 EMA, we're going to activate this exhaustion warning, and that's going to become an outright sell signal. So definitely keep on top of this. This is going to be a key development here in the market because this is a late cycle uh, sector, and you want to see this continue to act healthily. All right, folks, just want to take a look at the uh, the Comer uh, study on a couple of things. Here's the ES futures. The ES has a 13 exhaustion warning in place uh, off of the Comer study. We've used the risk level here, so this is still a warning. But if we if we settle down 
below the 10 EMA. Just keep in mind that we're going to uh, go to uh, an, uh, an outright sell signal from the uh, from the trade site comer. We also have the same condition right now in the uh, in the aggressive version of the uh, of the trade site seeker study. So right now we do have some indications here that we could be seeing um, at least an arrest to the upside and potential uh, downside signal from a couple of these key uh, key tools here. The NQs are uh, 12 days up and one more positive day or a new high in the market here is going to uh, put in place that 13 exhaustion on the Comer. That's very, very notable and uh, and certainly with the strict rules that the uh, Comer requires, that's going to be a notable, notable technical development. And here's a look at the Dow, the Dow, uh, Dow Jones Cash and the INDU. This has a 13 exhaustion warning in place. All we have to do is uh, get that price flip back down below the 10 EMA, and we're going to go to an outright sell in the uh, in the INDU. So um, there's a couple extra things to think about here today for a change up. Uh, the Comer is definitely uh, something that we pay attention to, and definitely can can signal and be a leading indicator for what uh, price action is to follow. So uh, keep an eye on those 10 EMAs. are going to be very, very important in the next few sessions. All right, that's it for this evening. As always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for TradeSite.